Okay, so let me finish up this section on the characterization. And the first section is essentially uh, non-average molecular weight. And I've, I've been focusing on the equation derivation and how we can put this data of osmotic pressure experiment into a plot to extract the MN and the B. But sometimes our people just want to know uh, the number average molecular weight uh, from very simple experiment. And then the, one of the most common one is called the N group analysis. Okay, So think about if I have a polymer with a certain N group, and here, let me give a new example of COH, right? And then uh, some of them has a shorter chain, some of them have a longer chain. But somehow, if I ever can calculate number of moles of, let's say, COOH, right? And this number of moles of COOH is same as number of moles of polymer chain. Because, that, because, you, because as you can see, each polymer chain has one functional group. And then what I need on top for calculating this concept is uh, total mass. Tons of the gram, right? So to total mass. So I can prepare a sample, I can measure the weight, and I know it weighs certain mass, and then I know how many molecules containing this uh, carboxylic acid group there. And this is exactly a concept of MN, which is defined if I count all, all the numbers, and that number times their molecular weight, and that means that their total mass, and this is a number average molecular weight. So it can be really com and can be done in a simple way. But it has a limitation, so I wanted to talk about molecular weight measurement limitation for n-group analysis. Even this is true for osmotic pressure experiment too. Osmotic pressure and uh, this, uh, this experiment, it all rely on counting the numbers and is, uh, is only useful for low molecular weight polymers. And typically what I mean is when your molecular weight is something in a way 10,000 gram per mole to, let's say, 15,000 gram per mole at max, right? If somebody say, oh, I measure the number average molecular weight using n-group analysis or osmotic pressure, and then molecular weight, let's say, is a 1 million, uh, that uh, is a very uh, uh, doubtful, uh, unreliable data. So we are going to, uh, we are not going to actually use this kind of method but we are going to use some other technique uh, that is going to be discussed, and that, that most universal technique is a gel permeation chromatography. But let me talk about a little bit different uh, aspects about any group analysis, because this is a quite simple and straightforward. And there are many, a simple way is a di uh, direct uh, titration. One think about is monofunctional, the other one we can think about difunctional. So let's talk about the monofunctional. So this is true. And like I said, if it is an acid group, we can titrate it, and but each one has a different uh, chain length. We do not know how many are there, uh, but we know, let's say, okay, I, I measured that for the, I did a direct titration. and find out mole of COOH by titration was, for example, 2.5, 10 to the minus 4, four mole. And uh, the sample itself was always 1 gram. Okay, I, I kind of dissolved the 1 gram of polymer, and then this is the, the number, number counts of this uh, carboxylic acid group. 
the thing that we can from uh, understand from here is the mole of COH is because I know the chemistry mole of polymer chain so mole of polymers so therefore I can simply think about the concept about number average molecular weight concept which is mass divided by numbers right total numbers and so what's my total mass one gram what's my total number that is 2.5 10 to the minus 4 mole of polymers right? so that's uh, how my how I did my number count so this one therefore if you calculate that number average molecular weight here is 4,000 gram per mole okay so once you finish this the final step is you need to actually look for uh, is this molecular weight is small enough that my titration gives a, a reasonable result okay so 4,000 gram per mole is pretty reasonable and is a, the end group analysis would work okay uh, so let me move on to the comparing another one which uh, here is I'm going to do the same thing I got a one gram subsample this time my chemistry I told me that it is a difunctional carboxylic acid So as you can see that we are counting the polymer different ways. We can only count the number of COH by the titration, but that is essentially you are counting one polymer chain has a two COH. So let's say I'm just giving the same data. Somehow I ended up getting the same result. But what that means is for the difunctional, in this case, this is essentially twice times the mole of polymers right so that's what i i think that i want to i i i know right so uh and then i can go go back and then calculate so what's my number average molecule weight it is mass total mass which is a one gram that I dissolve in polymer sample and then how many polymers how many moles of polymers do we have here right and because I know the moles of COH what I want is this one so therefore it is one half times 2.5 10 to the minus 4 right so by doing so, uh, you will, you will essentially what you what you see is this is uh, something that effective molecular weight per one functional group, and you need to count twice is on that. So by just calculating this mass, math uh, will give you the mn value here is 8,000 gram per mole right so having the same number of the COH and then you will get the number average molecular weight is in here is you need to count uh, effective uh, molecular weight per functional group and then then but overall functional group for this one is 8,000 gram per mole and once again this is also small enough uh, that and functional group titration method is valid uh, there is another one that I wanted to give you a reminder this is actually second method is much more common and this is a case where okay what about if you have a, a hydroxyl group this hydroxyl group is quite commonly produced in many polymer chemistry Okay, so I, I do this, and then in that case, what people typically do is, okay, this is a one gram, for example, right? This is a one gram. But what 
instead of trying to find the titration one, I am going to add excess known amount. Okay. Oh, the most commonly used is acetyl anhydride. Okay. So this is a compound that people add it up. And here I'm going to give an example of, okay, so the amount here is I'm going to use 5.0, 10 to the minus 4 mole. And as you can see, one OH group will react with one acetyl anhydride and liberate one CH3COO. H or minus, so one uh, acetic acid. So that's uh, that's what you find out uh, from from this experiment. And so then, the, what you find out is okay. So I, when you add this excess amount, and you will find out that. Okay, so this grams of sample is now transformed into a new sample, which is the one with CH3 and the one with CH3. And then there is a excessive amount of uh, OH minus. Right? So, uh, and then you, you do this titration on the COOH, and then if the example say moles of COOH is 3.0, 10 to the minus 4 mole, and what that means is uh, moles of OH is uh, 2.0, 10 to the minus 4 mole. So therefore, then we can we can say Mn is 1 gram, and then we know is a monofunctional. So we can just use this one as a counting the same as number of mole polymer chain, and that will give you 5,000 gram per mole. Okay, so it's just a Goal is trying to figure out uh, how the titration experiment is easy when you I just wanted to give you a, an example of this acetyl anhydride is being used uh, when you use this uh, trying to do the titration and, and get the result down so then this you generate this this amount of uh, the sample Okay, so the final one is an, actually people can also use an NMR, and they are using a little bit of the trick. So this is a trimethylsilyl chloride and TMSCl, and this is also quite useful when you have an OH with this trimethylsilyl chloride. You can essentially end cap that with this, you know, what organic chemistry call quantitative reaction. So there's a, you are using this one as an excess, but what you do is you have that, and then there is a, something that left over, TMSCL, right? But what you do is now you just do the precipitation. So the way that we can retrieve this polymer is we can do the precipitation of polymer. And by doing so, this is gone, right? And then you just and then redissolve polymers in NMR solvent. Okay, such as a CDCL3. And then what's the benefit doing this? By, by what you, you used to have the polymer chain with this OH at the end, 
But now, instead of trying to titrate one OH, all of a sudden that your polymer sample is chemically changed into something with nine hydrogens. So, and then this is uh, showing the, I find it the uh, NMR spectrum of um, this trimethyl silane functional group, and this is uh, happening right here. It's almost like a close to zero ppm, and then that's the really the where the peaks are. And so this is a typically not isolated, and that's uh, essentially worth of nine hydrogen, right? So. And then if you know your chemical structure of your polymers, you know how many hydrogens are there per repeating unit, and then you can look at the ratio to essentially looking at the ratio uh, about this. So what that means is uh, you find out nine hydrogen from this TMSCL, and then let's say you ended up having uh, 100, well, 1,000 hydrogen from the polymers because polymer probably peaks uh, somewhere around here, and which is kind of distinct from this silane-based compound. And then this one, you can you can see that that's a one end, and you can turn that into uh, the the how many dp repeating unit on this. So therefore, uh, your Mn is dp multiplied by m naught because you know how uh, this ratio works, and then this uh, how many hydrogens are existed there, and then you can calculate the degree of polymerization, and then you can calculate this by this number. So that's an uh, example of how also one can calculate the number average molecular weight, not using osmotic pressure, but a method using the titration or NMR.